All right, we are on Gurs Valley on the bottom left hand side. We happen to have Antarius playing as Haradwait, going against Athena playing as Lothlorien. So let's see how Athena does this and let's take a look and see what Antarius does. Now we know Antarius can get into some shenanigans based activities, but we know Athena can also do a, a lot of shenanigans. So we're going to see how this one pans out. Now, are we going to see scorpions? Are we going to see another one of possible monkey gameplay? Who knows? Monkey gameplay could be cool, but we don't see it too often in the 1v1s. It's very matchup dependent, sort of, and it's not like the standard, you know, cave troll that you might uh, see from. Ooh, okay. Interesting decision. So, Antara is going from the Hood Gathering in this matchup. Like I said, um,. Very interesting because Mahood are pretty vulnerable to archer based factions. And when you end up doing Mahood on an elven faction, it's not something you. It's definitely not something that you enjoy because you're going to end up losing them relatively fast. But against Lothlorien, it kind of works out uh, because you take down the Malorn trees faster, you're forcing Lothlorien into a defensive state and putting them in the uh, position to really invest in the defensive mechanics, setting them back on the unit side of it all. Yeah, and Terrace over here with the fourth farm already. Athena is setting up even further. Uh, the first tower battalion is coming out. Okay. And now we do see Antares, though, uh, supporting the Mahood with the Hirondor outpost. So this is always good because you don't really want to leave Mahood by themselves. Because if someone just grabs, like, one cavalry battalion, then you're just... They're on the back foot way too, well, way too heavily. And as we can tell, they already have uh, not decide to engage because they clearly have missed battle. the other but uh, Athena starting off here with the Lorian archers as a secondary unit maybe anticipating the Mahood push by Antares is a completely different situation now did Antares go for he went for horn okay very good but is Athena going to nice nice okay hold on are we going to see a lantern purchase? Yeah, he purchases lantern. Ooh, a little bit hard, a little bit tough, but he switches the defensive stance. He's got the horn buff as well for the additional armor. He's probably still going to get this tree. I'm just going to pan over here, see what's happening. Uh, the towers are on this freshly made bazaar. Okay. Nice. Okay, so he did get the tree. Cool. So Athena had to burn. Um, basically his horn, he had to burn a lantern investment and he still lost the tree with the Mahood push Antarius did. So that was a good trade for Antarius. And right now we are seeing the Lorian Archer again. Now I would love to see uh, Sanctum Value. Because in this particular matchup, Sanctum uh, value is bonkers. Because Lorien has a tendency to clump when it comes to Pike Archer and possible sword gameplay. But then again, uh, Poisoned Well is huge against the standard Lorien structures, disabling them, dealing damage, especially because the wells are attached to the structures. So that's a whole different conversation there in value. And over here, we are continuing to see Thena. I think he's on the defensive position. He doesn't want to let the Mahood uh, run through his base too crazily. Uh, wait a second, but he did make a green pasture in the back. So now, Antarius can't just go running around the Mahood, but he has to make sure he's keeping the Mahood with the pike. And this is going to be messy, because there's no pikes here. So uh, Antarius is going to definitely be losing a tribal archer and a Mahood warrior battalion. A very, very unlucky clean uh, absolutely clean sweep here for Athena got love stuff like that but now we're gonna see Antares definitely starting to make more pikes on the frequent 
He's actually upgraded to a level 2 Herondor Outpost and he's pushing for Herondor Raiders. Now this is good because he's, he has to kind of also keep up with cavalry as much as he has to try and stop them. And making your own cavalry is a good option for that. Unless you're in a situation where you're against Rohan and they decide to get uh, Riders of Snowborn on the field because those are the cavalry counter for basically uh, Rohan outside of Elfhelm. Okay, we see again the singular pike battalion. Oh, is it, is it going to be a war crime? No. Maybe not. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Anyways, back here real quick. Uh, we've got the pike, we've got the sword, we've got the archer combo, the uh, trio of Lothorium. And, oh, interesting. Okay, so... And Terry says decided to back out entirely here. And it looks like the Mahood are going to end up catching it. Okay. He also got the uh, Lorian Arches there. Very nice. But he's chasing it a lot with this uh, front line here. He could just pull back and try to take some of the Lorian units there. Uh, very nice. So he gets the pikes. He gets the clean trample next on the tower with. That's nice. Is he going to finish the job? Should finish the job. Yep. There we go. Let's take a look at the PP situation. Uh, five points in the bank. 625 CP for Lothlorien. Again, 650 uh, CP for Harad with five in the bank. So quite even. It's not like the players are both having terrible trades, but uh, Athena is on the defensive. He definitely needs to get a uh, a well on one of the Malorn trees right now just to help preserve uh, what units he's losing. But we can also see, again, uh, no pikes, but there's not really a cavalry battalion on the field. The one there is is actually uh, quite dead. And over here, and Terra's heading from uh, multiple points. But he needs some. I think he's targeting the tree. He needs some micro the archers to the tree. Two battalions of Herondo Raiders going for a clean sweep. Very, very nice. But they're getting stuck in between uh, the uh, tier one pikes. And then Terra's over here on the southern side, also forcing Athena to burn lanterns there. And Athena pops the lanterns here again. And it looks like ah uh, yeah okay. Athena playing the lantern game. Look at that. Stun, 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 stun. Yup, yup. But he's making sure Ben Terrace being very careful with his uh, Herondo Raiders, making sure that he does not lose them on the way out of Lothorian's base uh, because that would be quite deadly. I mean, he had all the opportunities to kill them uh, with the uh, Lantern Stun. Indeed, now we see Thena with the second garrison, which is going to help Lothorian uh, significantly here. Because once they have the second uh, garrison, in reality, uh, they are good for Uniprod. Uh, the doing a garrison and then a pasture can be a little bit difficult for Lothar. Riders of the night. Oh, is he gonna? Oh, nice. Okay, so Antares in a good position here, catching the Riders of the Ninth as they were leaving the pasture. Nice, nice. So again, uh, nine the points in the bank here. Thanks for the follow, Parziva. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, we see nine points in the bank here for Lothorin, 700 CP going against 875 CP Harad of nine points. But Antares is now gone for a CR rule. Very nice. Ah, appreciate that. Hey, hello, Cal. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for follow. Okay, right over here we happen to see, yes, March to War. I love this. Okay, hold up. So we got the March to War buff. Not something you see every day. You see a lot of fourth man darkness and dry spell position on Harad Waits games. But I really like that Antares is doing the uh, March to War position here. He's immune to debuffs. He's getting the armor and the damage boost. And it's a global buff for 60 seconds. Now, if we take here a look over here, he's got hitting from multiple angles. Very, and very good opportunities here as Haradwaith. And he needs to just control the Haranda Raiders slightly better. Oh, wait a second, though. Interesting that Thin has gone for Orphan. Typically, Orphan's not the best bet first. Oh, wait a second, though. He's got the Lanterns here. He's going to lose the Raiders? Ooh, is Thena going to forget about the stun? Looks like Thena is forgetting about the stun. Nope, he uses it. But if I was Thena, I would have definitely used the lantern stun earlier and then let Orphan feed off the Herondo Raiders. Very uh, unlucky. 
But, I mean, at least Orphan did happen to get level 2. But again, we see uh, Antares over here with... Ooh, look at this. Crazy. Okay, so he's burning another lantern stat. March to War is still applied. It looks like it has just expired. But anyways, yeah, the Behood get the next uh, Nifredal Bloom. Very cool. Ah, uh, Suladad now on the field for Antares. Give it the Hirondo Raiders a leadership and later the dismounted Hirondo uh, units. Okay, very good. Now, Antares is really trying to keep up with things here. 925 CP going against a 600 CP of Lothorian. And look at these Mahood boys, man. I'm telling you. Excellent unit against Lothorian, but you have to be very, uh, very careful not to lose them left and right to the archer units of the faction. As we know, Lothorian is an archer based faction. It's what they're best known for, so you have to be quite careful. And they did get that Nefer Double. Ooh, but look at that. Hold on there. Level 3 War Chant, 25% damage bonus. Really securing the position here in the back of Lothorian's base, taking out multiple structures. A very, a very big advantage here for Antarius. And now he's got a level four Mahood warrior. Let's just take a look here though. What's happening on the unit front? We see multiple Hironda Raiders now with Suladan. Excellent stuff. But we see, wait a second. CR oh, Antarius loses CR rule accidentally. A very, a very tough. Was not expecting that CR rule loss at all. If I was Antarius, I would be really disappointed to be honest. <laughs> Uh, Nifidel Bloom, though, uh, upgrading to a new tree. Uh, the general research ends up making a, a new object, and that's why the Florian's trees heal. Yep, Volley. We feel he's filling and doing the armor debuff. Not entirely killing uh, the uh, Mahood warriors, but basically just enough to try and secure as little losses over here for uh, Lothorian. Now, if we take a look over here, again, still got the Suladan Hirondo Raider combo happening, but we have the Mahood warriors as well. Uh, still in Lothorian's base. The 975 CP, 9 points of the bank here for Harabwe. But if we look over at Lothorian, Lothorian had to divert. They had to go for what is a Nimmerdal. They started off with Horn. They picked up Volley. They realized that they needed the economic sustain uh, for the faction just to try and keep up with all the uh, all the harass that they're taking. But now we happen to see Athena has gone for Rumel. And if we look here, he's just put down the waters in Nimbardell. So he's got the 10% global economy buff, but he's also got a rebuild paired uh, with the structure. So it's something that players have to be very mindful of, is that Lorien is, in theory, giving up quite a bit going for waters in Nimbardell, but at the same time, they're not. They're only losing out on Kjorn or Sylvan Allies or Gifts of Lorien, which is dependent on where your heroes are in their progression. But I love what is the number dial first off. It really ends up allowing you to have that recovery flexibility that you need, knowing that your faction's structures are generally weaker than the average faction structure in Age of the Ring. Okay, so the Lantern Sun has just worn off, but this Hironda Ray Battalion is going to end up dying because Rumo has just come over here but if we take a look right here Suladan dismounted okay so Suladan's getting his levels in he's got the level uh, level three slow passive now yep so Athena really trying to end up hanging out here and do a little bit of a recovery stage with Antares' ex excellent harass. But we do see Antares now going for the Umbarian Citadel. So this means he's trying to push into the late game side of Haradwith with this transition. Um, he is also upgrading the outpost. He did something here. Maybe he lost the outpost at one point and I just missed it. I don't know. But anyways, uh, we see he is, I believe, probably going for the Black Numenor Warriors. Maybe he's going for the Black Numenor Vanguard. But I need to see a caravan from Antares because if we don't see a caravan, then his late game army as Haradwaith will not be nearly as successful as it could. Now, Thena does have the Fortress Well for Lothorin. Now, this is something that people don't really know um, or they just forget. I think it's just a lot of people forget it. Uh, but... The Lothorian Fortress Well discounts hero revive time by 25%. So you get your heroes back faster. 
And when you compare it to Gondor's, for example, the House of Healing, it does not have the uh, the hero discount, but they are both priced the same. But I think the uh, difference in reality is simply the fact of the matter that Lothorian has an extra 5% on the revive time. Ah, but wait a second. We see Interis has gone for Barotopan. Okay, very good. Oh, March of War. I'd love to see it. Yep, yep. But we do see actually Hounder in the back sniping the Hironda Raiders and a Lantern Stun puts the Hironda Raiders just in the best position for Hounder to snipe. And Orphan in danger over here, but we see Lethal E. Fillin. Now, Monster War does not give an armor buff, so he's going to end up losing a lot of those travel units. And Hounder oddly going off into the distance for some reason. But where is Suladan? Oh no. Okay, Suladan was still mounted. Okay. And it looks like Orphan, was that Rumo that died? Yeah, he definitely killed Rumo. Okay, he screamed out Orphan's name. Anyways, we see uh, Kanda's Chariots now for Harawe. It's very cool value that we're seeing today. We're seeing the left side spellbook of Harawe. Not something we see every day. I really, I really, really like this. I like this gameplay that we're seeing from a terrorist. It's very good. It's different. Uh, yes, I love the Kanda's Chariots, man. But again, the March to War global buff. Very good. 750 CP for Lothorian and 9 points of the bank. But if we look over here, 1,000 CP for Antares. Now keep in mind, Antares has been very aggressive this whole game. Ooh. I bring from the tribes of yep, they are now huddling around the fortress uh, for that well replenishment. Uh, very, uh, very noticeable. Now, Antares definitely needs to pick up over here because I think he, if there's one spot that Antares could work on, it's just the back row back in the base because he's excellent at expansion, he's excellent at harass, but he ends up slightly falling off when it comes to keeping up the macro in the base of a unit prod. Uh, but we do see Thena over here uh, going for the hidden sanctum support. Very nice, okay. So we're going to see some Handmaidens, we might see some Amroth and Deirin, or we're going to see some Nandor. I would love to see some Nandor. Very cool unit. But it's not something you really uh, see Lothorian uh, fording every single day. Now Athena uh, just kind of keeping pikes on the sidelines, the outskirts of his base, I think. Uh, but he's also got a Talon over here, so he's getting that security of the economy bomb very good and it looks like he actually managed to hit four separate nefidel blooms very good he's able to have a pretty good opportunity there but i would have to say some of the nefidel blooms are not in that optimal position but i think he just needed the cp more than anything if we look over here he's got 875 cp against again harada weights 1000 but well, we need to see antarius yeah he's got suladan he's got the harana raiders but where is the caravan Ah, he's going for the pavilion. Okay, I'll accept it. He's got the uh, second outpost made, and he's upgrading it to level 2. We still see this one. Actually, it's upgrading to level 3 now. But anyways, Antares is splitting the groups up on the sidelines here. Very good. Oh, he's also got Karan Lambar. Very nice. Okay, so maybe if we get to see some Breaker of Stone value. That'd be great. Ah, uh, but hold on. This uh, town. Look at that range. Okay, it's not a bad range at all. Ah, uh, yes, the Corsair position for Antares is also going to be quite good. Ooh, yep. Oh man, that's lethal. Imagine Breaker Stone was here. Ooh. Oh no, 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 no. Athena trapped Antares so harsh here. Now imagine if he had actually acquired Hidden Bali from the Talon 2. It would just end up eliminating most of her Oddweight's army there. But Karan Lamar, uh, definitely now on the uh, tough position here. The, he might end up losing Karan Lamar because of this. He got caught in the Lantern Stun. He got caught in the range of the Talon. And very, very lethal uh, for Antares to have to deal with over there. But yeah, now we're seeing uh, basically... Harad have to back up and yeah, and we do see now uh, Thena has gone for Ring of Adamant. And where is, yep, Karan Lambar is dead. Okay, very tough. 
Very, very tough. But I like that we're seeing the three brothers on the field. Uh, we got Rumil, we got Orphan, we got Haldir. Okay, love to see that. Their bonuses do not stack, but they give each other damage and an experience bonus. And it looks like actually, ooh. Okay, and Terry's going for the War Mumak. Okay, so we're going to see some charge value, it looks like. Very nice. Now what level, yeah, level two, very cool, very good, okay. Can Corsairs win uh, with Lorien swords in melee? I am not entirely sure. I think there's a good possibility, but um, off the top of my head, I cannot tell you that. <laughs> it's just a little bit hard to, um, I wanna say yes. But I, I don't know because I, I don't think I've actually ever checked that out, Conky. But as we can see over here, uh, the Bazaar again pushed down here by Athena. Uh, we got Path Soccers as well lined up here on the southern point. Yeah, there's uh, the fire bombs have a odd fire rate. I would agree that they take a hot minute to kind of line up, and it could be better. Yeah, we got a lot of archers happening over here, but we see again. Ooh, wait, he used charge way too early, I think. Ah, no, hold on. But the brother, the archer hero duo is probably going to end up sniping. Oh, okay. He needs to just cycle trample the archer heroes, I think, at this position. Maybe he could just turn around real fast and, like, swoop this infantry front. Let's just see what Antares continues to do. Okay, well now we're getting some scorpions on the field here for Rod with very lethal siege option. Uh, but Theus just pulled out Celeborn. Pretty, I'm not gonna lie. I respect it. He pulled out a later Celeborn. Most people try to rush Celeborn, and you know that's. Uh, may I might do that. I might not do that. I won't say. Uh, you know. Watching as a noob, you guys play so well. Yeah, these uh, Athena and Antares are excellent players for sure. Uh, melee March Horn. Okay, first off, one thing to know about March Horns is that they are incredible in melee. A lot of people do not use them in melee enough. And if I could, I would only ever have them in melee. I just, I just enjoy them way too much. Uh, but yeah, see, and now with the Amroth and Durian on the field, he's got the elite cavalry presence, and Haradwaith is going to have to find a proper way to counter. Uh, but the movement kill being a level 2, below half health. Now keep in mind, it does not get monstrous recovery to level 3, so it's something to really consider in terms of opportunity with your movement kill. You should just generally upgrade this to level 3 for the healing. Yep, and Antarius happened to have done that. I would need these guys to have a 90% handicap if we wanted to beat them. Uh, it just takes practice, Cal. You can look at the uh, faction guides we wrote uh, for the competitive scene in the community server. If you're not in the uh, community server, the link is in my Twitch bio. But yeah, Thea now uh, dropping another talent over here. Not sure how, when it got bought, but he bought it. And he dropped another talent. So he's got three talents lined up. Let's just take a look at the economy. I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot at the moment, but he's going to have a whole lot pretty soon. What is an Immerdell? Three Talons. Excellent opportunities for Lothorian. And now he's going for the upgrade factor on his side. So despite the clumpy uh, nature of Athena's base, you know, there's a lot of good opportunities here to kind of see how to play Lothorian in a fast-paced game. The one thing you definitely don't want to do as Lothorian is uh, clumpy structures because every single Balorn tree contributes to inflation. And Athena again pushing hard with the archer back row. A few March horns in the mix now with Haldir. Haldir's only level 4. So he's still got two levels to go to Captain of the Galadrim. Now it's interesting to me though that... And Terrace is, okay, now he is just taking the scorpions over here. That's good, but he has to be careful with the talons. And Sit Rule is now back on the field. 
uh, for the travel leadership. He's only level one because Interis happened to have accidentally lost him way too soon. Uh, but we do see a 16 points from the bank here for Haradwaith. And again, uh, Lothorin is only at eight points. But the Scorpion value is going to come in uh, tremendously in the matchup. Well, now let's just take a look here. The Talon is not going to be able to shoot at the Scorpion. Nope, it is. Okay, it's got the range, yeah. And we see the Lothorian uh, group coming back here to uh, fight off the Scorpion. Now, Antarius trying to find the right opening to push forward with the Mumakil. It does have charge, but he has to remember not to keep it on the upgrade panel. Uh, because if he keeps it on the upgrade panel, he's not going to have the opportunity to use charge. And Celeborn here with the Sentinel of the Silver Tree Summon. Very nice. He's only level 3. Yep. He gets one battalion of archers at level 2. And then at 4, he gets a sword and archer battalion. Now, let's just take a look, though. What in reality is Sir Rodwaith going to do? I mean, he's got Nandor on the field. So, again, Thena ends up doing that very well. Oh, wait a second. Lethal is failing. He's got the armor debuff, but we happen to see the March to War global buff. And in the back end, very good op. Ooh. Ooh, okay, so Rumil's dead. But we have a massive trample opportunity happening here for um, Interiors right now. If we take a look here, if we can keep up the attention. Oh, wait a second. But he also had Casimir near that massive trample opportunity. Very, very cool. Okay. Due to the map. I don't know what you mean by due to the map. Maybe it was just like... He had his archers near the walls and you couldn't like, I, I guess his archers were hugging the mountain. The rocket was making it so the units couldn't go inside the clump. Yeah, the rock, yeah, I gotcha. I don't know why I read that as rocket. But yeah, Nandor on the front line, love to see his boys, good stuff. Casimir's banner, uh, I think Casimir's banner here, I feel like it really secured this fight. Uh, for Antares. Let's just take a look at the CP. So Lothorin down below 400 out of 1,000. And Antares, they're pretty even on the CP front still, uh, all things considered. But the uh, Nandor and uh, Celeborn holding up the uh, front line position. Now we do see it guards the Serpent. So if Antares had the opportunity... Ooh, wait a second. I hope he's not going to like misclick this. And like get his own uh, guards of serpent and end up killed. But yeah, Kelborn with the 100% armor buff now, Cunning Warrior uh, for the 25 25 debuff with Splash now as access to his ability is going to be a massive power spike here for Lothorian, uh, just further uh, enabling his survivability. Wait a second though. Very tight position here. Dangerous to fight Kelebor when he's got Cunning Warrior with the splash up around the geometry like that. Now he does have the Burning Sands going on. But he has yet to use it because he doesn't have the right opportunity to use it, I think. Yep. Now, the chariots did not get much value here with that in mind. Either simply so because the it, they're just uh, almost ready to expire, but slow down running around with the uh, guards of separate. Very good opportunities of harass. The Galathrim are at your command. Our shields will guard. And we see another Muma kill coming out here for Harad. Oh, it's a siege Muma kill. Okay, very cool. Don't see that every day. But guards of serpent. Taking a lot of structure damage right here. Taking a lot of structure damage. Very unfortunate. He needs to back these boys out, but he got the Karen Amroth on the back ends. Yep, he lost the battalion. He lost the Ludan. That's massive. Yikes. Okay. Raise shields. Point your spears. Ooh, the Golden King on the field at the end. Very good. Okay, so the Golden King. Uh, passively nullifies leadership. That's his greatest uh, skill set. His leader, his ba you know, he doesn't have like a standard faction leader leadership, but instead he nullifies the opponent's leadership 100% uptime. 
That's his whole uh, shtick. Now, a lot of people uh, aren't necessarily using the Golden King because they are more fond of the, um, I guess I would say, more lethal option, which is like around the bar or Slidon investments. Um, but the Golden King is just a very big opportunity if you can pull it off. And Galadriel here is level two right now. So one of Harad's biggest uh, weakness, I would have to say, is any hero with splash damage. And I say this because Harad tends to do a... A decent clump play. Um, so in the event that Harad is clumping against the hero splash and debuff elements, it happens to be a very, a very risky for them. Well, what is Lena holding on to over here? So we got a level three garrison. Does he only have one garrison right now? Or? No, he's got two. It's just over here. Yeah, two level three garrisons. Why does this look like an AI base? If he had one more garrison, like right here, being an AI base. Yep, so the one thing that Antares has to really keep in mind here is that once Galadriel gets level 3, she's supporting her, she's supporting the hero squad, but she's also debuffing heroes and heroic units by 25% damage. That is a massive. That is extremely massive. Adabasi, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. March Warrens and Karen Amroth with upgrades about to tear down uh, the town with the, the structure damage. I love this uh, particular combo. It is just a very strong. And it looks like Thena is just entirely pulling back. We do see the Siege Mumma kill uh, right over here. Karen Ar uh, Sentinel. No, oh, sorry, no. Amroth and Deering, yep. <laughs> Um, are going around harassing uh, Haradwood's base. And if we take a look over here, we All see a Casimir's Cold Judgment was used. Look at that. Anyways, Lothorin slowly but surely building back up the squad. And again, only one battalion in Andor, perfectly acceptable. But Athena now at 25 points in the bank, 26 points, my bad. So he's going to have tier 4 opportunity, and he's going to be having cast down its walls. Ooh, wait a second, though. Th uh, and Terry's here going for the Watchers of Karna, but he's actually at CP cap. Ooh, yeah, he's definitely not going to get the Watchers of Karna. He needs to revert that purchase and get the money back. <laughs> Athena's an AI confirmed. I mean, he's definitely got the powerhouse discount uh, feel, you know, somewhere. Okay, but I think we need to see, we need to see, uh, I think Athena just, I, th I feel like Athena really could just kind of push the game right now. And uh, if he goes for cast down its walls right now, I think he'd be in the position to win. Because there's not a whole lot left going for Antarius right now, as Haradwaith, generally speaking, I think. But we're going to have to see what happens. And we get the idea of the town. And it's interesting that he's backing away so soon rather than trying to just take down the town. But then to go over the Nifferdal Bloom and the Border Fence upgrade. He's done that on just about all of his talons that he has. So that's the fourth talon he has on the field. Let's just take a look at his economy. 2.3k. Now keep in mind, he's got Ring of Adamant. He's got Horn. He's got Volley. He's got Cast Down its Walls. Alright, so we have to see how Antares is going to approach this. But it looks like Thena is splitting his army up. He's not trying to stay in one lane. He might be trying to just do a nice flank opportunity. And what, ooh, what's, oh, the Fortress Elephant. Okay, I was a little bit uh, confused at first. I thought he was wasting uh, Black Matriarch or something, but let's just take a look here. Oh uh, yeah, he still has burn. Ah, oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, very good, very good. Burning Sands, wiping out the upgraded uh, Lothlorien army. Very good. Uh, but the uh, Mumakil going down. Casimir's Cold Judgment going off here on the Lorien army trying to run away. Now, if we take a look here, uh, yep, yep, indeed. March to War, global buff, 50% armor, 50% damage, very good. 
immune to debuffs. But, oh, wait, we just saw a Haldir teleport? Very nice. Yep, very good. A Haldir teleport to get the heroes out of uh, the uh, position here. But the Golden King about to get smacked a little bit by this Talon. Uh, but we're gonna. I, w I honestly think I would have just pulled the uh, Guards of Serpent and taken out this Talon real fast. I feel. Uh, I think anything else could have taken out that Nifidel Bloom. But yeah, 15 points here for Harabwe with 600 CP. So Antarius uh, just trying to get in a better position here. Now, it's interesting that Athena has not yet used a Ring of Adamant again. But I understand why. I think he's just trying to save it for a uh, larger engagement, something that's more necessary. So that's fine by me. And if we take a look here, yeah, I, I like what he's doing with the Guards of the Separate. He's just letting them be his own harass group. Uh, these boys, if I'm not mistaken, they deal hero damage. It's uh, quite lethal. And Emroth and Deering going down the southern lane here uh, to start harassing Haradwaith yet again. Ooh, but the Watchers of Karna here. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely going to see some Watchers of Karna value. You'd love to see that. Oh no, they got smacked up by the troll here. Uh, what levels? Golden King, level 3, okay. And Casimir's level 6. Let me just take a look here, actually, at the Golden King. Uh, the summon becomes available at level 5. Interesting, okay. That's something to always, uh, like, know and just remember. But yeah, level 5, he drops two battalions of Abracon Warriors. And those dudes are beefy boys. Now, Athena pushing in on a few different sides. On the southern, on the northern, and the center. Again, though, I'm a big March Warden melee kind of guy. And I think enough. Pe I think people just don't do that enough. They have such good performance in melee. And, yeah, he still has his spellbook opportunities. He's got 10 points almost in the bank. But it looks like Thena is actually slowly creeping forward in the match here with Nifida Blooms and uh, Talon Expansion. Galadriel's foresight here. Leadership nullification and experience uh, negation. Oh no, but we see the Condor's Chariots here going in on the Lothlorien Archers. But the Sentinels of Karen Amaroth should be killing these boys uh, quite fast here. Yep, look at that. Lord of White's terror and damage over time for 15. Paired with Cold Judgment. Very nice. Good pairing there. Excellent pairing from Interius. The damage over time mixed with the armor debuff is going to be nice. Uh, Captain of the Galadrum from Haldir though. For the 50% uh, damage at 15% speed for 30 seconds. And Ring of Adamant dropping here. Ooh, okay. Very good engagements happening. Very good trades. I think Lothorin's going to come on top, though, here. Definitely going to come on top. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, yep. Cast Down's Walls happening right over here. Ooh. But Idriel putting herself quite at risk uh, just with where she was when Cast Down's Walls was cast. But as you can see, the Nandor were not taking enough damage. Those guys are uh, pretty beefy when it comes to certain things, so it's not surprising. Uh, but the March ones are finishing off the Condor's Chariots. Now, Casimir's uh, banner giving uh, Haragwe that replenishment factor. Very good. Fear and Terror immunity as well. Knockback and Trample resistance, I believe, on top of it all. But yeah, Athena floating cash very hard. He's sitting at 5,500 with the multiple talents, waters, and Inverdell economy support. But he's, he's had this opportunity on the economy front because he's been able to really just push uh, Interius away from his base. Uh, Interius did excellent in the early game, excellent in the mid game. But once Athena got the economy support, it's a different ballpark. Ah, yes, Aya Arendil. Very good, very good. Now we see the uh, Siege Boomac over here. Yep, he's trying to use fourth man of darkness, okay. Ooh.
Oh no. I, I, I'm trying to remember who, I think that was just an Abercon warrior that died. Uh, but yeah, it looks like uh, Athena takes the match here. So GG's to both players. Excellent game. Some cool things were showcased here, and that's why I really like in the games I'm interested in casting. So if you have any, uh, feel free to send them, post them in the community replay depot on the server, and we'll go from there. But yeah, again, great game for Antares and great game for Thea.